During my time with EcoCare, I was asked to assist in the creation of the new version of the Escazoo Agreement comic book. So this is the first version that had already been extensively worked on. So if we scroll down, you will be able to see the comic book itself. As you can see, the photos have a very distinct comic effect on them and are in black and white. There are also clear speech bubbles and a comic book text throughout. So for the new version that I worked on, Margarita and Julia specifically requested the photos to be in color. Since it was to be a new version, there were also to be some edits to the text and overall layout of the pages. So to begin, I first had to find an appropriate program that would generate a similar effect on the photos. So first I had to google free photo editor or comic book filter in order to find an appropriate program. So one of the first better programs that I ended up finding was called BeFunky.com. So all you have to do is upload a photo and then you can use the program. So I'll demonstrate with a photo from the comic book how everything works. So what you'll want to do is click on get started and as you can see there are multiple things that the program allows you to do. But for today we're just going to do edit a photo. So as you can see, you can just drop the image that you want to edit here. So this is the image that I will edit as an example. There are multiple different things that the program allows you to do for editing your photos. So for example, you can adjust the brightness, contrast, and if you're working on a portrait, you can even add makeup. You can also add different shapes and text to your photos. So for example, if you go on your graphics, there's shapes that you can put in. And there's also text here that you can add. As well, you can add different textures to your photos or you can add frames. So if you're using this program for the first time, one of the things that will pop up under every single menu is from this eye here. This eye has different tutorials on how to edit your photos, how to use different elements that the program offers. So if you're a little bit lost in how to exactly do something, the tutorials here might be able to help you out. Usually I find it easiest to just play around with the different features that are available just so I can understand what each element does to the photo. So the important thing to keep in mind about finding a comic book effect is that all programs consider it a filter. So on Be Funky, the comic book filter will be under the artsy section. So as you can see, there are multiple art styles that you can apply. So for this example, we'll be clicking on the cartoonizer. Even within the comic filter section, there are multiple styles that you can select and choose from. So I will apply a filter just as an example. So once it's applied, you can actually see that it's a really nice filter. With this bar here on the side, you can change how much the filter is applied to the photo. And if you click on this little settings box, you can adjust different elements of the filter itself within the photo. Obviously, once you apply the filter, a watermark does appear on the bottom left corner. So obviously, while this filter would have been great for the purposes that I needed it for, it would have been inappropriate to have the watermark on every single photo in the comic book. Regardless, if you are able to use this program and it doesn't matter whether or not the watermark appears in your photos, then go ahead. This program is very easy. It's straightforward. And the fact that there's tutorials embedded into it makes it very 
、um, easy to learn. So, GIMP is also a program that is 100% free, and rather than being a website, it is its own program that you can download. GIMP is a lot less complicated than something like Adobe Photoshop, which is very technical and it has a lot more features than something like Be Funky. As you can see, GIMP has its own website, so you can easily download it and install it onto your computer. So, this is what the program looks like. This box here are all the tools that you can use to manipulate and edit your photos. So, as you can see, I have already uploaded an image, but you can either drag and drop or click on File and then Open. Or, as you can see, there's a shortcut which is Control O. So, as I mentioned earlier, the comic book or cartoon look will be under filters. So, if you click on this menu at the top, you will find the artistic section. Under here, there is the cartoon filter. Before you apply a filter, though, especially on GIMP, you want to make sure that you can right click the image, do select, and then all. Or, as it said, you can do the shortcut, which is Control A. This makes sure that you are selecting the entire image that you have here. So, again, you want to go to filters and then go to artistic, and you have the cartoon filter there. So, once you click on it, this box appears, and these two bars let you adjust how much of the filter is applied. As you saw, this is an incredibly slow process, especially when you're trying to find the right balance between the two bars in order to make the filter look just right. Overall, I also find the filter to not be as appealing as something like what Be Funky generated.、Um, so, all in all, I didn't really want to use GIMP. When choosing the right program, you want to make sure that it works easily and smoothly. So, you want to be able to use it in a way that you can actually understand and not have to consistently keep Googling how to do something or play around for hours just trying to make sure that you can actually use it.、Um, most importantly, though, you want to make sure that whatever program you choose, it generates the images in a way that you are pleased with. So, if you want to use something more technical than Be Funky, then GIMP is really good for beginners. I had no knowledge of how to use GIMP when I first started to use it, but eventually I did get the hang of it quite quickly. That being said, you can totally play around with the tools to learn how everything works, but you can also Google the basics of What the program does, and how you can manipulate your images, and how you can edit your photos in certain ways to make sure that you can get the image exactly how you were thinking. As I mentioned earlier, one of the most important things you can do when you are faced with a program like this, even something like Be Funky, just play around with it first. You want to make sure that you understand what each button can do, and generally, what tools. Are there and accessible to know that you're picking the right program. So, obviously, Be Funky and GIMP were not the programs that I ended up choosing. After doing a little bit more searching, I did stumble upon pixart.com. So, like Be Funky, it is another free website program and it's quite similar in terms of the user interface to Be Funky. So, the plus side to this website is that obviously there are no watermarks on the downloaded images. This program is a little bit different from Be Funky and especially GIMP in terms of the level of technicality,、um, but I will show you some of the general features and what the user interface looks like. So, obviously, you want to click on Get Started for free, and from there, the program itself will open up. So, this is what the program looks like once you open it. So, here if you go to uploads, this is where you can upload any photos that you want to add here. And as you can see, there is this canvas layout here already added. 
So it is a square. Sometimes you might not be working with a perfect square image. So you can go to the layout and actually change the size of that canvas. So for example, I can choose this size. I'm not 100% sure what the size of the photo that I'll be using is, but I know that my example photo is relatively this size. So I will drag and drop. Or if you want, you can go to uploads and click the upload button. So as you can see, my photo is still a little bit smaller than the canvas. So what you'll want to do in order to get rid of that is just go to canvas crop and crop that to the size of your photo. That way when you finish editing and you want to download the picture, there is no extra border size. And there you go. So as you can see, just scrolling down the side here, there are multiple things that you can add to your photo. So for example, you can add text, you can add stickers, you can even draw if you want. So in order to find any filters and also apply general changes to the photo, like adjust brightness, contrast, different colors, things like that, you'll actually need to click on the image itself. So once you do that, you'll see this little mini toolbar kind of pop up at the top. So as I said, you can adjust it, you can create different edits, you can remove the background. Um, I do believe if anything is marked pro, it is for the paid version. So just the general edits you can do for free on this program. Like I said, if you need anything a little bit more technical than what this can offer you or what Be Funky can offer you, then GIMP is the best program because it's free and you can do a lot more. So in order to find filters, you will want to click on the effects button. So much like Be Funky, there's a whole wide range of different filters that you can apply to your photo. In terms of thinking of a comic book filter, the cartoon filter doesn't exactly fit the look that I was looking for specifically. So just to show you as an example, this is what one of the filters looks like. Obviously it is not at all like a comic book, it's really not what I was looking for and I don't think it's something that Margarita and Julia would have liked especially because it changes the way that the people look and I don't think that would have been appropriate. So I just clicked on none to remove it. So obviously in order to get a little bit more closer to that comic book like effect I would have searched through every single filter that this program offers to find the one that was perhaps named and looked closest to what I was looking for. So obviously like the other programs, Be Funky and GIMP, it would be under the artistic section. So as you can see, there are multiple different types of art styles that you can apply. And as you can see, there's the cartoonizer filter, but there's also a comic filter. And I remember when I was choosing this program initially, I was debating between the two. I remember I had spent a lot of time going back and forth between two filters just to see what they look like and comparing and contrasting. So to begin, I'll show you what the comic filter looks like. Obviously, it needs some adjusting. So you can click on this little button that shows up. It's the settings button. And here, as you can see, you can adjust the elements of the filter on the photo itself. So the problem with this photo right now is that there are too many lines. So if you just reduce that, then you'll see that it is a lot clearer. Obviously, this filter is good, but when you choose the comic book effect, I find that it actually looks better in black and white much like how it looks in the first version of the comic book. The black and white setting on those pictures looks very much like a comic book and I found that it didn't quite do the job as well as I hoped when applied to the colored photos. So again I will just remove the filter so I click none and I'll show you the cartoonizer one. So as you can see, this is a little bit different than the comic book effect. And in general, 
I do like that it has this distinct drawn look to it. But as you can see, it is a little bit difficult to make up the faces. So again, you can go to the settings and adjust the filter itself. So I'll just play around with it and show you the changes that it makes. So obviously this filter is very different from the Be Funky one, but when you adjust the elements of the filter just right, it still has a distinct drawn look to it. Obviously, I don't 100% remember what settings I had the filter on for every photo, but the pictures didn't look like this exactly. So again, you kind of have to play around with it a little bit and see what combination and what settings you like the most so that you know what balance of the filter in the photo is to your liking. So once you're done editing the photo to your liking, you can export it and download uh, with this export button in the top right. So again, you can just change the name of the file. For the free version, you can only upload it as a JPEG. As you can see, these are the final photos that appeared in the comic book. These photos have a very distinct drawn or sketched look to them, yet they still look like they're from photographs. An important thing to keep in mind is that when you're working with others, in my case it was with Margarita and Julia, it's important to share all that you found. So in my situation, I was sending Margarita and Julia sample photos. When I found Pixar, everyone agreed that it looked good and Margarita and Julia specifically liked that the images retained a lot of their original look. So to end the video, it really is a matter of truly taking the time to do adequate searching of what exists. And if you're able to pay for a program, then by all means do so. I chose to offer something free only because I knew that it would all in all be easier. As well, it's important to use the programs that you are considering. Make sure that you understand how they work. And if you're looking for filters, make sure you try any and all that can be close to what you want. So much like what I did on pixart.com, I tested multiple different filters that could have created a type of comic look effect to the photos. Lastly, don't be daunted by using these programs if you're a beginner. I knew next to nothing about creating something like a comic book in this way, but I was given free creative reign. And while I understood what was wanted, I was able to create images that have their own distinct look to them. So if you remember what the original images looked like at the beginning, they looked nothing like this. But when you compare them side by side, each version of the comic books will be their own versions, which is the plus side to having the photos look so drastically different with the filters applied to them. As well, it's okay to learn as you go. So like I said, I really didn't know much about doing anything like this. But testing different programs and understanding how they work can really help you because that's what helped me. Google is a great resource to find any quick guides on how to do something specific to images. So for example, how to create a transparent background using a specific program. So if it were GIMP, I would just Google adding transparent background on GIMP and I would find some type of tutorial that would allow me to understand and learn how to do that in that specific program. As well, like Be Funky, there are tutorials embedded into that program that teach you how to use it and to do certain things to your photos. So in the next video, I'll go over how I assembled the comic book pages themselves and I'll show you what programs I used, what programs I considered, and how I ended up creating everything.